prosperity. Right. It's freedom from fear. That's right. It's provision. It's protection. I don't see a whole lot of that right now. I don't see it. And joy of the Holy Ghost. I see a lot of people down. I see a lot of people depressed. I don't see a lot of people worried. That's right. That ain't the kingdom of God. Amen. So that lets me tell, that, that tells me that the kingdom of God has not come in the fullness that the Lord wants it to come in. That's right. But this is the sad part of it. The kingdom of God is within you. Amen. Jesus said himself, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. The kingdom of God is among you. Come on. Amen. The kingdom of God, the rule, the reign, the righteousness, the peace, and the joy, and the Holy Spirit is in you. Yeah. It's in you. Let it out. Come on. on. you got to let it out. Yeah. Come on. Get stirred up. Let it out. Yeah. Let the righteousness of God come forth out of you. The kingdom come. Not your own righteousness. It's because right. it's like filthy rags. It's, it's right. dung. It's toilet paper. Right. But I tell you, his righteousness is righteous. He's a righteous and he's a just God. Come on. Yeah. Let it come out. Let it come out. Let it come out. Yeah. He's a God of peace. Let the God of all peace surround you. Yeah. Let him guard your heart in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Let his shalom, his, his peace, his prosperity, his healing, his protection, his provision surround you and guard you like a fortress wall. Yeah. Not only you, but let it out. Let it encompass those around you. Let it encompass the world around you. Oh, for the Lord wants you to know he wants his kingdom on the earth. Yeah. I put my kingdom on the earth. I want my kingdom to be manifest in the earth. Yes. Then there's joy. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Things are right in this kingdom. They're right. If it's right, there's no injustice in this right. kingdom. Come on. There's peace in the kingdom. Amen. That's right. There's no lack in the kingdom. There's no hungry children in the kingdom. There's no sick people dying in prisons because nobody cares about them. That's right. They ain't that stuff. They're not in the kingdom of God. What joy that produces. Yeah. What joy that produces. What joy that produces. She caught up on side. What joy. Come on. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord. He shall not be one yet. Oh, God, pardon me. I forgot this is a presbytery church. Praise the Lord. Oh. Oh, Karabasata, la basata, I know the goodness of the Lord. Oh, oh, no. All right, let me read to you for Proverbs 3 5 says this. Listen, baby, you're familiar with it, but don't, don't, just because you're familiar with it, don't mean you. I'm familiar with it. There, my <laughs> When it doesn't, you know, for me, you to get breed contempt. That's right. You 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 quit you quit getting into the truth of it, amen. Because you're so far. I know that scripture a lot right now. So, I think John three sixteen is probably the most widely known scripture there is. In every football game, somebody's got it painted on their belly button. <laughs> but that don't mean everybody's saved, That's amen. Right. right. Let's look at this. It says Proverbs three five says this. She says, "Trust in the Lord." Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Say heart. Right. Heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then, then secondly, do not, two things, do not lead or put the weight of your existence or your reality right. or your or, or your your just your everyday life. Listen to me. I'm talking to you now. I'm preaching to you. Listen to me. Do not put the weight of your existence on your own understanding right. your own understanding most listen most of us now i'm not accusing anybody today but most of us in the day if we do not stay on top of it i'm talking about spirit filled talk talking but word believing people if you don't stay on top of it and listen to your spirit because that's where god lives is in your spirit in your heart you will begin to 
pervert back to your old way of living, of walking by your understanding. And you understand, that understanding comes from your senses, from your, listen, from your senses, from what you can touch, taste, smell, smell, whatever. You understand? It comes from out here. It comes from out here. And good Lord, what have we learned during this thing in the last month or so? There's, there's all kind of information coming in. You know, it, it, you, if you lean to your own understanding, you are screwed. Right. Amen. I, excuse right. me. Truth. But I'm telling you, you are. Because they're telling you one thing. This will tell you one thing. We'll tell you one thing. Right. And all they're doing is depending on their understanding. That's right. I ain't got it. I have not seen one person stand up in a place of authority, a political position that said, this is what the Lord says. Right. This is what the, thus saith the Lord. That's right. The Lord has shown us this is what we're supposed to do. The Lord showed us this. Is, now, there may be behind the scenes people speaking into the lives of leaders, and I pray they do. We pray yeah. for that. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, but you get a bunch of people that all, and God bless them, all they do, if they're educated by the world, all they know is the information they gain is through the world system. I don't care how high it is. Right. I don't care what kind of degrees they've got, but what kind of doctors and PhDs, whatever they got behind their name, I'll tell you right now, if it's natural understanding, it is from the earth, and according to the word of God, it is earthly, it is sensual, and it is devilish. That's right. That's right. That's right. You got that? Yep. I'm telling you word. I'm not saying you ought to listen, but let's come on. If you don't learn to hear what God's saying in your, to your spirit, you ain't, you, you're gone, man. That's right. Because these people are crazy out there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Ah. So this is the word of the Lord. So it's this great revelation. First of all, trust. Amen. Trust means to put your reliance in. The, word, the Hebrew word, I won't get a whole open a little Hebrew dictionary up, but the word trust means this. It literally means a, a, sa a safe shelter, a hidey hole. Anybody know what a hidey hole is? Yeah. That's when the enemy is after your butt. You got to hide somewhere. It's a hidey hole. Somewhere you can go hole up and you can cover up and you can be protected yeah. from harm. Exactly what the word means in Hebrew. Hebrews were not very complicated people. Amen. Trust. They say trust, trust in Yahweh. And that word there is Yod, Hey, Bob, Hey. It's not a Dana. It's, it's Yahweh. It's the Father. It's the Creator. Jesus is His Son. Yod, Hey. Shin, Bob, Hey. Amen. Put the Shin in there. Jesus' name means Yahweh's. Salvation. Jesus is his Yahweh salvation. Y'all get all y'all up down because I'm using these words y'all ain't used to. If I had Job, well, y'all wouldn't say nothing. Well, you go ahead, you whatever. But I'll tell you what, he says specifically trust in the Father. Right. He let the Father be your hidey hole. Amen. Amen. Now be honest with me. You know, you, you know, you know that the, over the past months or so, right now, some of some of them out there listen to are they are they having to? I know some folks that have had to. They've been forced into a position where God is their hidey hole. Yeah. Amen. We got a, we got a little bit of choice. Some people ain't got no choice. That's right. But you know what? As bad as it seems, it's a good thing to get forced into that hidey hole. And it didn't say it instead of God, the Lord Himself, Yahweh Himself, has invited us into the secret place of the Most High God, Psalm 91. He's invited us there. He's made a way for us to come there. Sure. We weren't able to come there any other way, but we came in through the blood of His own Son, through Amen. the blood of the everlasting, eternal covenant. Yes. Yeah. Amen. There will never be a null. There will never be broken. It will never end. It will never fade out, become obsolete, because it is a divine love covenant. Yeah. Amen. Right. Of the shed blood of Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe upon him should not perish, Amen. but have everlasting Amen. life. Come on. Yeah. Right. That's right. Amen. 
So trust in him. Respect your president. Pray for him. I don't care if you don't like him. The Bible doesn't say nothing about you liking him. He right. said, pray for him. Why do you pray for him? I thought on that uh, on Facebook. Hardly anybody watched it. But Why do you pray for him? That you may have a, a quiet, lead a quiet, peaceful life. That's right. So you can share the word of God with people. Amen. So you do what God called you to do. You out there? That's right. That's why we... Yeah, I, I, got, I know I got some people. I got some friends that I, they post anti-president uh, stuff. And Trump. Let me tell you something. You know, let me let me just back up. You know, I'm on my on the soapbox, but I get. If you're on, I've been on a lot of a lot of airplanes. I've been through some bad weather. And when it got bumpy, and it got started getting bumpy, or we were circling the airport for an hour or so and we were running low on fuel and we didn't have any, another airport to go for. I didn't run up there and bang on the cabin door and, and say, I, you know, I want to impeach you. I want to get rid of you. I don't like you. I didn't vote for you to fly this plane. Well, by God, if you don't know how to fly the dang plane, you better sit your butt down, put your seatbelt on, and start praying. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. If, any, if it is an idiot flying the plane, you better pray for divine intervention Amen. in his mind and his Amen. skills. Amen. Instead of trying to kill him and tear, drag him out of the cockpit, and you go, all of you going to go down. That's right. That's right. Are you out there? I don't care if you, if you like me. Oh, well, I never mind. Praise the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. When you're looking at when you're looking at government officials, you better be trusted in the Lord through. Amen. <laughs> That's right. You better be looking right through them. Just look right through them. Just look right through them. See the Spirit and see the Lord standing back here. Amen. Amen. Do you follow me? Can you do that in the Spirit? Mm -hmm. See, see that. That's right. See that. See the creator of the universe who happens to be your father if, you're, if you've been born from above. You're, that's good. He is not only the creator of the universe, but he's your daddy. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. He's, he's my daddy. Right. Yeah, I, yeah I pray, when I'm praying, I meditate. I'm saying, by God, hey, Bob, hey. I'm, I'm speaking the name of the Lord. The Lord, the name of the Lord is a high tower, and the yeah. righteous run therein. Yeah. Amen. Hey, in a time of trouble, I run there. I go there. I go into my special place. Amen. You understand this? I go. You you can't tell. Go in your special place because there's there's, there's that's good stuff there. <laughs> Trust in Yahweh with all your heart. Trust in your heart. Your heart. So you got to get where you get get in touch with your heart, your spirit. You got to get in touch with your spirit. Amen. I'm not so concerned about it. I, I believe in education. I, I like to read. I like to study. You know that? Come on. But I'll tell you right now, I'd rather have a, I'd rather have a pure, clean heart than I would the, uh, uh, the IQ of Albert Einstein. Right. Because you got a, 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 if you've got a heart that's hooked up with God, you've got a heart hooked up with the man, the, the man. Amen. He knows more than you ever will be. Amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. This is the word of the Lord. I'll tell you this. But this is the word of the Lord for this season we're in right now. Amen. I can't tell you who the Antichrist is. I have not got any insight into the Antichrist. I have got not any insight into when Jesus is going to return. I, 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 I'm, not that, I'm not that high up on the totem pole of it in heaven. But he has given me this word. Trust in the Lord. Trust in Yahweh. Trust in the Father. Yeah. Amen. With all, not part of it, all of it. Some of you hold it back. So you, got, you give them a little bit, you got to give it all to it. Oh. Let me tell you something. Things ain't going to get no better in your life until you give it all. Yeah. Try. Until you give it all. Give it you understand? He He's not really concerned about the part that he knows he's got. That's right. That's right. He's about taking territory. Mm -hmm. 
He's the Lord of hosts. He's a, that means he's the, he's the head of an army. He's about taking territory. It is there's areas of our heart that belong to him, that were bought and paid for by him. Do you hear this? Oh, yeah. That belong to him. And, he, and we've given our heart to him. If you, if you believe, didn't you give your heart to Jesus? What do you come on? Think about what you're saying. I gave my heart to Jesus. Well, who's it belong to now? Jesus. It don't belong to you no more, honey. That's right. You gave your heart to Jesus. So he's about. This is what he's about. He's about. Well, you know, there's some areas in there that need to clean it up in there that they, that that they had been totally surrendered. If they gave it to me, I'm responsible for it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, they might not, ooh, a little pressure, a little pressure, a little pressure. Especially when you feel, if you start to feel the area, your pressure to a certain area of your life. And you're, you're, I'm talking to believers now, I'm talking to born again, born from above believers. Listen to me. And you, if you start to feel that, it's something, it's something, it going on. Come on, that's a, that's part. He's coming. In, I'm prophesying to y'all. Don't even know. Do you? He's he's coming after that part, mm -hmm. and he's not coming to destroy you. He's coming to he's coming to fill it with his glory. He fill it with his oil. Mm -hmm. He fill it with his healing balm. He restores your soul. Yeah, that's right. Yahweh is my shepherd. Yahweh Rea, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He, he makes me to lie down in grace. He make him make you lie down. Yeah. You've been running around too much. Amen. He's gonna make you lie down. But he's gonna make you lie down in green pastures. Amen. He's gonna lead you by steer. You've been by trouble waters. I remember that song, Bridge Over Trouble Water. Yeah. Bridge over trouble. You know, he used to, he used to play they, doctors used to recommend that song to to play to people that were on bad LSD trips. You know, I took a lot of LSDs, I know. Something about that song, bridge over, yeah, bridge over troubled waters. Why? So bridge over trouble. Troubled waters signify disturbance. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. If you know, bridge over it, it enables you to, to pass from this place to this place, and you don't have to go through the troubled waters. You go over them. That's right. Amen. He makes you light out of green pastures. He was, and then he says he restores your soul. You need soul restoration. The enemy's listen. The enemy's coming in your life, and he's he's targeting areas of your soul where 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 your divine destiny is at most at stake. And he's coming there, and he's punched it, and he's bruised it, and he's wounded it. Because he walks that there, he knows he can take up a residence in, and he can destroy you, and he can take you off course. But the Lord says, "I've come, I've come to restore your soul." Yeah. The very Shikana Bosata, the very area, the very, the very area, he comes to restore your soul. I'm getting through in a minute. All right. All right, now let's get to the second part. Do not lean. Do not put. Don't lean on your own understanding. Quit leaning on your own understanding. Don't be a fool, golly. Go if you can drive the car down the road, you know. Understand when the light turns red, you stop. You don't have to pray in tongues for an hour to see if you're gonna stop or not. <laughs> there's certain there's certain th natural things. <clears throat> I'm not talking about get. To, I'm talking about leaning on your own understanding specifically. And listen to me, specifically in times when things don't make any sense. That's right. Yeah. Where there's confusion. Has anybody ever had any confusion? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, come on. Now I ain't talking about you in the grocery store and you got you confused. Which which brand of coffee should I buy? Oh Lord, I'm seeking you now. <laughs> come on, go get some that. That's what. That's just what to give it. To. Spirit filled people are bad night. You mm, idiots walking right. in the grocery store praying in tongues. Yeah, pray in tongues. That's fine. Go ahead. I, I shouldn't have said that. You, you shouldn't be praying. I encourage you to pray. If I get you to pray in tongues more than five seconds a year, I'd be doing good. So I, I'm not going to discourage you. Pray, pray over your coffee. Praise God. I repent. I'm wrong. <laughs> All right. What I'm saying is, 
don't lead to your own understanding because you might not know everything. Just consider it. <laughs> just I want you, I want to offer this for your consideration. <laughs> you might not know everything. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay? Uh, now, I already know that I don't know everything. I really don't. I really don't. I know it, I don't. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Do not lead your own understanding. Do not lead your own understanding. Now, how are you going to accomplish all this? How is it? How, don't you even tell you to do something that don't explain how you're going to do it? Huh? Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord. Brother, just trust in the Lord. You go, oh, I would, but you how? I want to. Quit leading to your own understanding. Quit leaning to your own life. Who do I lean to? <laughs> How do I lean to? Why not? <laughs> and then you go to you start pretending, then you get religious. Yeah. I trusted in the Lord, brother. Just trusted in the Lord. Scared to death, hiding out, won't come out of your house. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Mm -hmm. I'm not saying be stupid. That's right. You're already stupid. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I say that? No, I'm sorry. I repent. Praise God. Oh, he that wins souls is wise. I know I just lost some. I don't want to win you. I don't want to lose you. Come on. I'm sorry. I apologize. You're not stupid. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Let's look at here in verse 6. He says, this is the way. He says, acknowledge. This is, how, this is how you trust in the Lord. This is how you trust the Lord. This is how you don't believe your understanding. Explain it right here. Amen. He says, in all your ways, listen to me. In all your ways. Say it, in all my ways. In all, in all my ways. Well, that's not just a few ways. That's not just your religious ways. Your every ways. In all my ways. Acknowledge him. Amen. Now let me. Let, now we'll go to my little book, okay? Because the word acknowledge there is a word. I love this word. I fell in love with this word. Shaddai. Yeah. It, it means more than you think. I mean, it means acknowledge. What do you mean acknowledge him? Let me read you. I just might go back to my book, favorite yeah. Mississippi Jew here. That this is the word yada. This is this is the word translated here. Under, you know, lead you, oh, you know, acknowledge, acknowledge. Excuse me, acknowledge. He says the idea of knowing in ancient Hebrew thought is similar to our understanding of knowing, but with pers is more personal and intimate. We may say that we know someone. But we simply mean we know of yeah. his or her existence. Well, I believe in God. I know God. You understand? How many people, you know, I, I talked to a lot of people that were unsaved that, that, that said, well, I know God. I believe in God. Well, Paul had an answer for that. He says, yeah, you, you do good to believe in him. Even the devil believed in him. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you're in good company. <laughs> in this class of knowing, you understand? You, 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 you not, just because you acknowledge something exists doesn't mean you know it. That's right. right. I'll give you an example right quickly. I'll try to get through. I'll give you an example right quickly. Jesus said, in that day, mm -hmm. you come to me, and I'll say, depart from me. Now, come on, this, this, this sounds cruel. But, but it, I have to get over and teach you about the resurrection, about how everybody's going to be raised from the dead. Every believer's going to be raised from the dead, but they're going to be raised in the, you read it for, in Corinthians, in their own order. Mm -hmm. what, we thought that means it's my turn to get right. Now, order means a, cl a class. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the ironic priesthood <clears throat> was an order of priests. But Jesus wasn't of the ironic class of priesthood. <clears throat> he was of the class of Melchizedek. That's right. So we are of the order of Melchizedek. Amen. The Bible says we're a royal priesthood, a holy generation. That's right. Doesn't it say that? Mm -hmm. 
called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are a royal priesthood. What kind of royal priesthood are we? Are we, are we erotic, Levite priests? No. We, we're, we're called up to the order of Melchizedek, who is the king of righteousness. In the city he was king of was Salem, peace. There was no record of his beginning, no record of his end. And he ministered out of the power of everlasting life. Amen. Or resurrection power life. Glory. So when Jesus said in that day, I say to you, depart from me, I never knew you. He's not saying I'm sending you to hell. Sure. He said, he said, no, you, you can't you can't hang out here. Because you're not of this order. He they say, Lord, <clears throat> did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we did we did we heal the sick? He said, depart from me. I never knew you. See, we can we can learn how to cast out devils. We can learn how to heal the sick. We can do a lot of things. We can learn how to come to church. Are you out there? Somebody listen to me. Yeah. You can learn you can learn all about the Bible. You can quote the Bible from front to back. The devil can do that too. I can tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. He did it to Jesus. That's right. But, but here it says, it, it does, listen to it, please listen. He said, this does not simply mean to know of, your, of his or her existence or God's existence. But in Hebrew thought, one can only know, listen, one can only know someone if they have a personal intimate, not just a personal, but an intimate, an intimate, into me see. That's right. Think of that. In to be seen. You see into him, he sees into you. You ain't hiding nothing from him. That's right. You're open. Your heart's open. My heart's an open book, Lord. Cleanse my heart, oh God. Search my heart and my reins or my kidneys. I find that out. It's researching about doubt. You know, the Bible refers to reins, and it's, it's translated as kidneys. The kidneys were the seed of wisdom. And when you're not doing something in wisdom, you're doing something in something else, and it, it affects your body. Every, you know, every one of your body parts, your body, your body will tell you a lot about it, what's going on in your spirit. Mm -hmm. That's another story. Not going there, okay? But he said they had a personal and intimate relationship with them. That's what God all means. A personal and intimate relation, intimate relationship with. Listen to this. Uh, and <clears throat> with them. In Genesis 18, 19, Elohim, which is God, that's Hebrew for God, Elohim. Elohim says about Abraham, I know him. Amen. God said that about Abraham. I know him. Abraham was called the friend of God. Jesus said this, he says, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. Mm -hmm. right. He's talking to his disciples. His disciples. He didn't say that to the general public. That's right. He said those that, that intimate, that slept and ate with him. You got me? He says, an intimate relationship. He said, I knew, he, God said of Abraham, Elohim said of Abraham, I know him, meaning he has a very close relationship with Abraham. God has a very close relationship with you. You say, well, I've got a close relationship with God. That's not what it's talking about. That's right. It's talking about his relationship with you. Mm -hmm. He wants to know you. you come on. Right. See, we're, we're, we're very self-centered people. We're very narcissistic. Narcissistic? Whatever. Narcissist? Narcissist? It kind of, we really are. You know, well, I know God. I, I, I want to know God. We're always praying it. I want to know you. Listen, listen, this, I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish with this, this, I'm going to prophesy to you. Listen, it is true. We always said, I want to know God. I you know, but the churches have expressions that, to know God and make him known. Mm -hmm. All right. Listen to me. It's not put down, but I'll tell you, this is what the Lord said. He said, I want to know you. Amen. Oh. Sure. Will you put a notch on your belt? Will you get a revelation about God? Well, you know what the Lord said to me. Hey, look, that's, that makes 10 right there. 
That ain't what he's talking about. Right. He said, acknowledge him in all your ways. Let him know you. Amen. Let him know you. I bet I had to repent last night. I did some stupid stuff yesterday. And I didn't go to, and y'all all think smoking, drinking, and going out with women. But I didn't. It was something else. Work. Losing my temper. Getting mad. Mm -hmm. And I needed grace. Man, I tell you, I felt like I, I needed grace. I need grace. I need mercy. Are you following me? I'm an old world. I can't get out of this. I can't, it's like I'm trapped in a box. I, I can't get out of it. I'm, I'm resentful and angry and mad over something. I can't get out of it. And Lord, I know it's wrong. I know I can't function like you created me to function when I'm in this situation. Help me, God. Help me. Hey, 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 hey. Lord, you know how resentful I am. You know how angry I am. You know what a jerk I am. Whatever, you know, I'm not trying to be self-deprecating, whatever. I said, but I'll tell you, you know me, Lord. You know me. But even though you know me, you help me. That's right. Amen. You Amen. Come on. Amen. Now we want to hide from God. Mm -hmm. If we listen, I give me, give me, give me, give me a heads up. Yeah, you know where to go. David said it. He said, if I go to the deepest parts of hell itself. Or go all the way. He said, everywhere I go, you're there. That's right. right. Amen. But I'll, I'll blow you by. In the, in the lower parts of the earth where people are souls that have rejected Christ dwell right now, mm -hmm. Jesus walks among them. Amen. Sure. I mean, come on, if you had a, if you had a kid that was, it was it did bad and screwed up and got sent to prison and you loved him, even though they did screw up, when you go visit them? Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh God, I can get that, brother. Why would he do Because he's even 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 the worst sinner, and I'm talking about there's some people out there that I, I would thoroughly love to see get it. <laughs> but I'm human. But Jesus, I, that's what he was. He knows me. He knows that. I'll admit that. I ain't gonna hide that. I'll tell him. I tell you, I'll tell him. Mm -hmm. That's why he says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. First John 1 John 1.9. What do you think that's all about? He wants, you to, he wants you to come to the revelation that he already knows about your sin. Mm -hmm. When you confess it to the Lord, I'm not talking about to a priest or somebody else. I'm talking about to him. You're acknowledging that he already knows. Mm -hmm. And he and, and the promise that he's faithful, that he's just, he's righteous. To already, he's forgiven. He's already forgiven that sin. Amen. But he wants to cleanse you from the iniquity. The part of your heart that Amen. tends to go there every time. It tends to go there every time. Amen. I'm finishing. You get ready for next week now. We ain't gonna get out to about three o'clock. Praise the Lord. Uh, and nobody's ever coming back to church. No, I'm not. I, I don't beat that. I didn't say that. I'm not. I'm, I've gotten it down about 12. So we're good Baptist now. We can go be. <coughs> Praise the Lord. So he said, acknowledge him at all. That's how you do it. That's how you don't. You trust in him. That's how you trust in him. That's how you lean on him. By acknowledging him. Having an intimate relationship with him. Let, let, let me say this. You, you know this. You can't. You don't. You don't trust what you have not tried out and it's proven to you. That's right. <laughs> I was going to use it. This is a bad analogy, guys. You don't seem very spiritual, but let's say let's go to handguns. A lot of people buying guns now. They realize nobody's going to protect them, but they're going to protect them, right? Mm -hmm. I can remember when I, I bought my. I got my permit, my carry permit. I think it's years ago. And I went and bought, I didn't know nothing about guns, didn't know anything about, you know, raising the 22 rifle as a kid, that's it. So I went and bought a pistol, <clears throat> and I carried it around, I was so proud I had it. No, I didn't tell anybody I had it, I, you, know, I, you know, it's concealed carry, that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. You ain't supposed to know yet. You got, right now, your mind's going, well, you're a preacher, you believe God, what are you doing? I'm carrying a gun around with you, and I'm not carrying right now, so you don't freak out. <laughs> I don't care for my own personal protection. I care for my family. That's right. I'd rather die. I, I, honestly, I'd rather die than kill somebody and send them to hell. Mm -hmm. 
but I will protect my family. Amen. And that's my, my rights as a citizen. Until the Lord does not to, I, I'll do it. But anyway, I got this, I got this handgun. I probably will get kicked off Facebook if you talk about gun. But I got this handgun. I thought this was, man, I'm so proud of God. I carried it around. And I never shot it. It's kind of like people getting saved and never having a relationship with Jesus. Never shot it. So when my, my son-in-law was going to the range with us, I said, hey, well, take his pistol and see how it shoots. He brought it back after he shot it. He, he, he did his head like he said. He said, man, get rid of this thing. He said, it, it stole pipes by every other round. That means it didn't eject. It just stand up in the shape. That means that means somebody's trying to hurt you. You got your gun for defense. You're screwed. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, to carry the gun, so carry the gun, you carry the right. You, you put this false car. It's like a lot of Christians. A lot of Christians. Well, I know Jesus. I gave my heart to Jesus in 1943. That means you bought your permit, you got your gun, but you ain't never shot it. That's right. So you don't know if you get in a bind if that thing's gonna work or not. That's right. That's right. That's why you, if you if you need a, a handgun or a weapon, you need to go somewhere and shoot the thing mm -hmm. and see if you even know how to work it. That's right. Right. Because I guarantee somebody trying to kill you, they're not gonna have any mercy. Well, he don't know how to use the weapon. I'm gonna leave him alone. Are you following me? I'm going to tell you, listen, you need to try, you need to become familiar with that. You need to say that thing is dependable. That's right. If it's got a good reputation, get your block. Get in front of it. Or something got a good reputation, and use it, know how to use it. Mm -hmm. So you, and God forbid you ever have to use it. That's right. You need to pray every day. I, I never had to use this thing. Are you following? I know I'm going to get in trouble with this, but I'm trying to put a point. You do not put your, your life in the hands of something you have not proved out and you're not familiar with. When I say familiar, you don't know how it works, and you don't know how to work, work with it or cooperate with it. And you, you understand me? And that's the way we are but with God. We say we know God, but we have never spent any time with Him. We've never had any encounters with Him. We have never talked to Him about anything. We don't spend no time with Him. And, but when the, when the crisis comes, when the bad guy shows up at the door, you pull out your defense weapon and you fire and the sucker don't go off. Or you miss. Or, you miss. or worse than that, you shoot somebody else that you shouldn't be shooting because you, you don't know how to shoot. Right. Are you following me? That's, right. that's, a, that's a crude analogy to a lot of you because I know a lot of you out there are you liberals or whatever color. I love you anyway. Jesus does that. But I'll tell you this, this is an analogy. You don't trust your life to something you don't know. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you don't know God, you can't trust. You, if you've never been healed, you ever realize it back during the healing revivals of the 50s, that every one of those, every one of those men, that Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagin, Senior, all the, all those all those healing of had great signs and wonders. You know that every one of them was was healed of a terminal illness before right. they ever started preaching. That's right. Oral right. Roberts had a stutter and had tuberculosis. Brother Hagin had three a, a blood disease, a heart disease. He was paralyzed. God raised him up. I know those two personally. Come on. And, and they, they, so they knew intimately the power of God to heal. So with great faith, God could flow through them to heal the sick. Right. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? That's right. That's right. So whatever area your life been through, and you've known God in there, that's where your power is going to lie. Amen. That's not, not lie like not tell the truth. I'm telling you, it's going to reside. The, the glory, the, the glory realm is going to reside on it. Are you following? Amen. Yeah. So trust. I did not lean you on understanding. How do you not lean you on understanding? By filling your, filling your mind with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about filling it. You, if you, uh, you've ever noticed, I've been criticized for this. I'll give a, script, I'll give a scripture. Uh, and thank God for him. I, I like, there's a lot of things I thank God for him. But you need to can tell me where the scripture is. Or you can look at what his phone real quick. I'm, I, I might say, give me a chapter and verse, brother. I, mean, I couldn't do it, but, but I tell you what it says. Amen. I tell you what it means, and I tell you I walked it out. Amen. Amen. Been down that trail and walked with Jesus. 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being braggadocious about that. I'm talking, this is, this is, this is that inheritance of every believer that's watching me or looking out here. You hear me? This is no special being done to This is the free gift of God. Amen. Amen. Right. This is eternal life. Amen. This is the best thing that ever happened and ever will happen. Yeah. God Almighty Jesus, thank you, Lord. Why do you get to that? Let's praise God. <sighs> Prophetic acts create spiritual realities. Spiritual realities manifest as physical realities at some point in your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. When, they, when, when John saw the angel in the book of Revelation, I turned the flag off. He wanted to buy that worship. You've been in the presence of angels. You don't, you don't, you don't get familiar with it. They're so awesome. Sometimes you're tempted if you don't know better to think there's something else and worship them. The angel told God, said, don't, said, don't see that you don't do that. And he said this weird statement. He said, he said this, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And that's right. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Where am I going with that? Every prophetic act. Let me, let me clean you up on prophecy right quick. And I ain't talking about charts. And I'm not even talking about charismatic prophesy and everything to move. That's right. I'm talking about prophetic. To be prophetic, God's called us to be a prophetic people, is to, is to hear what God's saying and bring a demonstration of it. Amen. Yeah, in, in the New Testament, the prophecy is comprised of edification, comfort, exhortation. what? Exhortation. The exhortation. Thank you. Comfort, edification, and exhortation. To exhort somebody. Three things. Let me say that. When you when you exhibit that. By knowing the Lord and walking with him in his ways, you will exhibit the testimony of Jesus. Amen. You'll be a prophetic person. Prophetic persons are not just people that can walk up and read somebody's mail. That's right. Thank God for that. Amen. I'm not putting it down. But a, a prophetic person is one through the, their walk with the Lord. Because they are actually walking with him, not just saying I'm walking. They are walking with him. That's right. They're going to express edification. They're going to build somebody up. Yes. They're going to bring comfort to them. Mm -hmm. yes. Or they're going to exhort them That's right. to do something, to alter their path so that they won't get off the path, which is the way of the wicked. That's are you right. following? Mm -hmm. right. Come on. Yeah. So your actions, your physical actions, are are felt in the, in the supernal realm, the supernatural, invisible realm. And in, and in turn, they manifest, they come, they go, goes around, comes around. You got it? I got off there, I love it. Praise God. I got to quit, praise the Lord. Well, thank you for joining us today. If you didn't already cut me off, praise the Lord. <laughs> <coughs> We appreciate you to like you if you enjoyed this, like it, share it. Uh, start a watch party. I thought I found out that this is a great thing to do if you're watching, you know. Start a watch party with your friends. You know, if you don't want to watch me anymore, just cut the sound off, walk off, and go make your cheeseburger. Praise God. But get the word out. Amen. You like I always say, you can be you could be an evangelist. You can spread the word Amen. just by punching a simple share button or like button or whatever. Amen. I don't get no money off this. They do not. If I get a lot of likes, they do not send me a check. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but the Lord does want the word of God to go out. Amen. Amen. He wants the word to be known. Amen. His word's going to cover like the glory cover the earth as the waters to the sea. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand up. And we pray. I'll let you folks get ready to cheer me out. Let me bless you before you go. Amen. Thank you, Father. Let's receive blessing right now. Thank you, Father. May you all have all faith. Kneel before you.
presenting gifts. May he guard you with a hedge of protection. May Yod Hevav Hey illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, bringing order, and he will give you comfort and sustenance. That's right. Yod Hevav Hey yes. will lift up his wholeness of his being. Yes and look upon you, and he will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. Thank you, Father. Father, we pray that in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. amen.